Welcome to The Mischief, I'm Valen, and this is Ender.io, how you can optimize a lot of your builds and get things set up so that you can, well, have access to everything that you could possibly dream of. Okay, maybe that might be a bit extreme, but we're going to try and uh, get you guys set up as quick as possible. For how uh, you guys want to start, you'll want to check out the previous video if you haven't already, which should be in this same playlist that we're on here. But otherwise, I'm going to help you guys optimize a lot of... I don't know, early to mid-game Ender I.O. stuff. Not necessarily vanilla Minecraft, but definitely Ender I.O. stuff. And it's going to start with, of course, of all things, an alloy smelter and a sag mill. Sag mill is going to be a big focus of this, but we're going to start with the tools first, and then we're going to move into sag mills, because you're going to want to set up your sag mills with your tools. So, to get things going, first thing you're going to want to try to obtain, if possible, in this case, obviously, you've already gone through the, the stuff in the first setup. You, you've got, like, uh, the ability to uh, make Endermen uh, at will, kill them in boats if you so desire, or just regular ways. But there's more efficient ways of getting their drops and fighting them, and that is with one of these, the Ender. It's a very handy sword, and you're going to need at least a couple dark steel ingots, which requires, of course, you know, coal powder, obsidian, and iron ingots. Coal powder is just coal tossed in a sag mill and ground up and you'll get an ender which i then recommend you empower it at least to the first level which means that you take the ender put it into an anvil with uh as it says let's grab this one that hasn't been empowered yet a vibrant crystal and four xp levels and you put it in here and it will come out as the Ender Empowered, and then you can charge it up with, hopefully you've got like some kind of charging station. You can actually make a simple charging station. I think that there, there's a, a simple variant to that now as well. And then you can use those, and it will power this up and use some of the power as well as the durability. It will offset some of it, but more importantly, it will basically give you uh, increased skull and Ender Pearl drops. When powered, Endermen can't teleport once hit. You also get extra damage and speed. And if you look in the blue lettering there, it says plus 0.4 attack speed. So it's going to be, uh, you know, attack speed of 2 instead of 1.6. And it does a little bit more attack damage. So it's going to be uh, 8 attack damage instead of 7. So it's it's already a very useful tool. It's going to be good for harvesting Endermen. As well as getting you more XP levels. You're going to need a lot of XP in this mod. Uh, but you're going to want all the Ender Pearl drops you can get. And so on. Now... That being said, we're going to move on to the next part, which, yes, it's still focusing on tools to start with, because as soon as you can, you're going to want to make one of these, an enchanter, which is made with four more dark steel ingots. Yes, that's right, four more. Two diamonds and a book, which involves basically these ingredients here if you break them down a little bit. Yes, I could break down the iron into nuggets, but I didn't want to go that far. And you'll get an enchanter. Now, an enchanter is similar to a vanilla Minecraft enchanting uh, table, but you get to choose what you want to enchant. Oh, this this is fantastic. You can see all the names here and so on and choose what it is. You just need a book and quill and stuff. And what are you going to want to make in this case? You are going to want to make this a silk touch book, which is actually pretty darn cheap. Uh, obviously, a book and quill will require these ingredients. It will require at least one slime ball and 15 lapis lazuli as well as 13 levels of xp uh, and then four additional levels to apply it to some kind of pick now in this case i'm going to recommend a dark pick because if you look at the durability on here it is really really good and when you compare it to something like i think i've got a diamond pick in here yeah 1561 and a dark pick is that much nicer uh you know 2000 and you're going to put silk touch on there that's going to be really important for the entire rest of this video. Silk Touch is really going to get you a lot more bang for the buck than most of the other pick enchantments out there, except, of course, maybe like efficiency or, or spoon or something like that. But, but still, it's going to definitely increase your out or output in the end. So what else am I going to want to do? You, you might want to consider on either this or the uh, on either the ender or the pick. You could also put uh, on here as XP boost, which is going to be, you know, depending on the level that you put on there, some gold and some more lapis as well. That could definitely help you out because, as I said before, you're going to want some XP levels. But that's just up to you guys how you want to do that. It's just an alternate solution. Now, But now that you have Silk Touch on a pick, you can Silk Touch everything. One, it's going to save you space in your inventory. Two, 
it's going to make sure that you can get a lot more bonus materials by using your sag mill, which is going to be very important. Now to give an example, using a diamond pick, mining 64 redstone ore gets you about this. Now that's just standard, not enchanted, anything like that. But if I were to use, a, in an extreme case, a sag mill with an energetic alloy grinding ball installed, it would get you from 64 redstone ore that have been silk touched, obviously, all of this, which is going to be, you know, like <laughs> considerably more output. Now this is a slightly extreme case, but I think that it is uh, going to generally give an idea of some of the benefits you can get from using a sag mill over using a regular pick with some kind of fortune enchantment. Now I, I will get into those comparisons shortly, but first, Let's get your sag mill upgraded a little bit. And I'm not talking about the capacitors. We'll talk about that towards the end of the video. I'm talking about things like this. These, flint, oh, grinding balls, all sorts of wonder stuff. Okay, so what I've done here is I've cleared out the grinding ball that was in there. We have a capacitor in here. Like I said, we're going to cover that in a minute. Let me turn this off. And I'm going to put in some cobblestone. Let me get this crap out of here. There we go. 16 cobblestone, it goes in, but it doesn't run because I've got it set to activate with redstone. But we're going to want to configure the top here. If you click on the bottom, you can see a much clearer image of the sag mill itself. We're facing the front here, and on top it has it set to push or pull. You can actually right-click and change this to whatever you'd like it to be. In this case, I want it to be push and pull because I want it to automatically make me some materials over time. Now, this will take a lot more time if you have a slower... Uh, lower tier capacitor, but as I have it upgraded with that already for demonstration purposes, you can see that it is currently working very fast, making a bunch of stuff. It is currently taking the cobblestone that I had in there. There was only 16 pieces, and there's no grinding ball. But if you keep an eye open, you'll notice that suddenly there will be a grinding ball. Oh, there we go. Flint, which is actually really, really good. What this does is it actually will start increasing your output by having this in here. Now, flint is only one type. If you look here, I did a search for Ender.io grinding balls. We've got a lot to choose from, and I'm going to be going over that briefly so that you can get the best idea of what might work well for you. I have some suggestions, but this is an excellent early game stuff. If you just toss like a stack of cobblestone in there, you'll get yourself squared away with some really early game, pretty much free, uh, grinding balls. And then what will that do? Remember, I tossed in some cobblestone and I've got silicon out of that. What it did was it took the cobblestone from there, ground it up, the output went back up, and then that output went back in, got ground up, went up, back in, and so on until it couldn't do that anymore. Now here's what it was making. Cobblestone, when ground up, will yield gravel and sand. Gravel, when ground up, will yield sand and flint. Sand, when ground up, will yield, on occasion, silicon. And, therefore, flint doesn't get ground up. Silicon doesn't get ground up. So that's why I had these left over in the chest. And the flint, because it's considered a grinding ball, when inserted into the sag mill, does not get ground up. It goes, boop, into the grinding ball slot and automatically will start feeding itself. So what I recommend if you want you have some more, like you came up, you're doing some, some mining or something like that, or you're about to do some mining, take a stack of cobblestone that you've already made, if not a couple, throw them in a chest up here, set it to push-pull, and let it start feeding itself with a bunch of flint. And you'll have some early game grinding balls. And what this is, this one here is going to increase your uh, main output, which is the, basically, uh, if I'm grinding up some redstone, it's going to give me more redstone dust. Uh, bonus output, uh, it, it would give me a bit more of secondary outputs, like uh, sometimes when you grind up redstone blocks, you'll get things like silicon or cobblestone. It would give me more of those. Uh, and in this case, it also uses less power. So therefore, <laughs> you don't have to waste as many materials trying to power this setup with whatever kind of generators or solar panels or whatever it is you have running this. It will use less power to do more stuff. Obviously, a really good, easy start to it is just tossing a couple stacks of cobblestone in there and getting yourself set up with that. Now, to move on further, let's actually give you a bit of an example. Now, if I come over here, I currently have set up in here. Oh, that's just some wheat. In, in here, I have no grinding ball. 64 gravel, when ground up, gave me this output as an example. This one here, I've got 64 gravel with a flint grinding ball set up, used up about six of the flint maybe a little bit less, and it gave me a whole bunch more flint, 
and a stack and a half of sand, more or less. I mean, it's not exact, but about a stack and a half. And then if I go over here to something else, like an even better grinding ball, an energetic alloy grinding ball, it gave me almost two stacks of sand and a half a stack of flint, which, yeah, that's pretty darn cool. And this is all just from the same thing, one stack of gravel. So you can see it also used less of the energetic alloy grinding balls than it did for the flint. This is because most of the grinding balls will have the same durability, um, but in the case of flint, it, it has a, a lower durability and gets used up more frequently. But then again, it is very easy to come by. So let's kind of cover a little bit about that, uh, the other grinding balls. Now, this may look a little bit haphazard right here, but it is to better illustrate some ideas. If you look here, we've got all these different ones. Usually the recipe involves just five ingots of some type, will make you about 24 of these grinding balls, and it's it's well worth it in most cases. Not all cases, most cases. Like in this case, um, this gives you exactly 100%, 100%, and it just cuts down power use. So redstone alloy grinding balls, which are made from iron and redstone, if you really are desperate for power, this can help you out. But otherwise, it's not going to give you any bonuses. Uh, so it's just a power cutting tool. But some of the other ones, like energetic, if you look, gives 160% to the main output, 110 to bonus, and power use is 110. So it uses up a little bit more power, but it definitely gets you a lot more of the uh, main output, which is in most cases what you're looking for. So a half a stack of gold ore with flint gave me about this. A half a stack uh, using a solarium grinding ball gave me a little bit more cobblestone because it has a higher bonus output percent. If you look, that's 215% and less power use. Uh, so it's like a better version of flint <laughs> by far. But um, the energetic, while it does use a little bit more power, gave me a lot more gold, which is actually very important because that's more what you're going to be focusing on. And the reason I'm focusing on energetic alloy grinding ball will be covered in a moment. But it, I feel that it's a, a pretty solid choice for uh, early days grinding ball, if not mid game or most of the time in Ender IO. Now, as a side note, I also did this with coal. You can see you get a lot more outputs just in general from coal. You get, you know, almost two stacks of coal itself. Uh, you get like a half stack of coal powder and so on. But you also have a chance with any of the grinding balls of getting a diamond. It's less than 1% chance. So even if I were to, and it's a secondary output. So even using a solarium grinding ball, just remember less than 1% chance. It doesn't say exactly what that is. That could be 0.1%. So 215% of 0.1% is going to be like 0.215%. So that, that's not really going to increase the chance. But there's a possibility of getting a diamond when uh, grinding up coal ore in here. But you also get a whole lot more coal that you can use to, I don't know, power generators or whatever else you need. Uh, more coal powder, for instance. But that's just an example. We go over here. We've got a little bit more. Now, I was talking about energetic alloy grinding balls. This, I feel, is actually the, like the heart of Ender IO machines, because if you want to upgrade anything, you're going to need it. Let's, let's take a look at the, the use here. You've got your mid-tier this, your, your different uh, obelisks. You've got your, your power conduit, any of the mid-tier anything. You're going to have to basically go through this, as well as your experience rods are going to be used for those as well. Your capacitors, this will allow you to upgrade your basic capacitors to double layers and so on. And it's also uh, required for making vibrant alloy ingots because you have to then smelt one of these with an ender pearl to get those, which are a little bit more difficult to come by. Now, on average, with a, uh, a vanilla pick, you, you mine up redstone or you get about four and a half redstone. You smelt up gold ore, you get one. You break glowstone, you get about three, three, maybe a little bit more than three glowstone dust. It varies sometimes a little bit less, sometimes a little bit more. But on average, you get about three. And if you put an energetic alloy grinding ball in here, uh, and this is just to show you how you actually can recuperate and make a huge in, uh, profit from your materials by using these. Just one energetic alloy grinding ball. Ground up about 21 of these items. And it, it, it basically seven glowstone, seven gold ore, and seven redstone ore, which is the key items being used to make an energetic alloy ingot. You need one of each of those. Now, if I were to grind up all of these with just one and get all of these bonus outputs, think about it, instead of like getting uh, about four times seven, 
which is somewhere in the adding in the half amount you, you get around somewhere around 30 uh redstone it's already like added in an extra stack plus i get 10 silicone your gold instead of just getting seven gold i've got like more than three times that almost four glowstone i'm getting uh about four times or about four uh gold glowstone per on this one so you definitely get your uh money's worth and this is just one you can get 24 of these from one build of five energetic alloys so therefore you're really getting your investments worth instead of like your standard amounts by mining these and smelting them up you'd get a lot more bang for the buck so i don't, I don't think i need to sell you on those anymore i mean if you really want to compare like a fortune three pick with uh, lapis here it will outdo flint it will outdo solarium uh, not by much but a bit but when compared to an energetic alloy grinding ball it totally outdoes it now it, it the reason i'm using this one is because those are relatively easy materials to come by if you go with something like a vibrant alloy grinding ball it definitely has a higher main output energetic is 160 vibrant is 175 and yes there are even like uh end gamey ones uh, probably down here that might do a little bit better but these ones are really good for your main output vibrant is well worth it but like i said it does require to make those ender pearls which aren't quite as easy and i don't know many people that want to stand there and smack endermen all day long uh until they've got a mob spawner of some sort set up but otherwise this will be a really good alternate. And then if you have a whole bunch of energetic alloy, then you can always upgrade that to Vibrant really easy uh, if you so desire. All right, so let's talk a little bit, just a little bit about some capacitors here. Now, using a capacitor, your basic capacitors in here is better than no capacitor, obviously, because it's not going to function. But um, you, you toss in a double layer, it's going to just increase speed. It's going to use a tiniest bit more power, but just barely. And then when you toss in the Octodic, Actually, no, it's going to use the same amount of power. I forgot. These two use the same amount of power to process things, but it's going to be a lot faster. And your Octodic is going to be um, a lot faster than that. I mean, you were seeing how fast I was processing things over there with the Octodic. And if you look here, this is how much it takes. And I broke down the ingredients uh, to their most basic form, uh, barring ingots. One basic capacitor requires this. One double layer capacitor requires this. One octadic capacitor requires this. So it's very doable. Yes, there's a lot of ingredients. Yes, it's a little bit of micro crafting, but it's not that bad. If you have at least this amount, you can use it to upgrade your sag mill. And later on, when you're able to get go to the end and upgrade your uh, sag mill to like an enhanced sag mill, I recommend not going with something like a basic capacitor in there because you toss a basic capacitor in there. It's actually going to go slower than your Octodic regular sag mill. <laughs> now, in this, this case, um, if you put in this one here, your double layer in an enhanced, then it's, it's just going to blow this one away. It's going to be such a fast increase. It's, it's ridiculous. But I mean, heck, if you had one of these to begin with, then you'll already have an Octodic, you know, you know one of these with an Octodic in it, then you might as well just whoop, drop it into your new enhanced one that you'll probably need to make anyway and then just go crazy town with with the speed enhancements on that and that pretty much sums up a good deal of i don't know a lot of talking <laughs> on my part and for those that are curious about what's on my head I, I used a painting machine with a banner and and you can put that on your your helms and and yeah you can make it look like this it's really cool and fun so yeah i i highly recommend you guys check out ender io it is a lot of fun there's a lot more still coming out and it is constantly changing and evolving and getting better and better and uh that's pretty much it so if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see more please let me know give me a shout give me a like give me a subscribe be sure to spread the mischief to everyone that you could possibly think of until next time folks see ya